guys, welcome back to Quack. Today, Cookie and I are going to be telling you everything you need to know about raising a Peking duck. Let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna start by going through a brief history of the Peking duck. So Peking ducks have actually been domesticated for over 2,000 years. They were most likely developed in Southeast Asia. They were created in China and exported to England in 1872. And they have now become the most sought after breed on the market. All right, let's talk about the physical attributes of Peking ducks. So Peking ducks only come in one color and that is white. However, the ducklings are yellow. They're those cute, fluffy, yellow ducklings that you see pretty much, <laughs> pretty much everywhere. Um, around, especially around Easter time. Um, so the yellow fluff will eventually give way to the white feathers as they start growing. Uh, their orange legs do remain from duckling to adult and their bill can range from a pale pink to a dark orange. Their body shape is long, fairly wide and full breasted, which is, op which is optimal for meat production, which is what these ducks were originally created for. Obviously this one is a pet and not for meat production though. All right, so let's talk weight. The females will weigh around eight pounds while males will weigh between nine and 10 pounds. Cookie here weighs about, I'd say between seven and a half and eight and a half pounds. So she's, she's a little bigger for her breed. She's a little heavier. She might actually be closer to nine pounds. She's pretty big. Um, and my male Quackles weighs about 10, 10 and a half pounds. So he's pretty big for his breed as well. Um, Sorry, she really likes to eat hair. Um, the Jumbo Peking can weigh up to 12 pounds. And Jumbo Pekings are literally just Peking ducks that were like ultra, like if these guys were bred for meat, like they were really bred for meat. Like they're a super heavyweight breed. They're not optimal for pets, I would say, simply because um, at around 12 weeks, they're ready for butchering. They've reached their uh, full potential of, um, of weight and so it's when they are most optimal uh, for butchering and because of their heavy weight they can develop a lot of leg problems later on in life so um, when if you're doing a search for a breed that you think would be best I would not necessarily recommend a jumbo peeking just because their lifespans may be shortened uh, because of leg problems that they could experience. The average lifespan for peeking ducks is around 8 to 12 years and that's pretty average and pretty normal for most duck breeds. All right so let's talk about breeding. Peking ducks were specifically bred for meat so they also produce large white eggs so if you are in the market for a breed that's going to give you big uh, rich nutrient rich eggs the pekings are sorry about that definitely um, a good runner for that um, the eggs are large rich in protein and great i've heard that the meat is pretty good we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video so that's what they're bred for they're also extremely hardy especially in cold climates they do really well so if you're worried about your ducks getting too cold in the winter time don't worry with pekings because they develop down fluff and extra fat so that they stay pretty warm throughout the winter time. All right, so let's talk a little bit about their behavior. So Peking ducks are known to be one of the most gentle and docile breeds, which makes them great for pets. If you handle them a lot as ducklings and give them a lot of treats, odds are they'll be pretty friendly when they're grown up. Um, they are excellent free rangers. If you free range your ducks in an environment that has a lot of good natural resources for them, they could probably forage for their entire diet and you wouldn't have to feed them that much extra supplemental food. Um, they are really good, like, I guess, alarmists if they sense danger or if they see like a hawk or a raccoon or a quiet coyote or something, they will make a lot of noise and they will alert the rest of the flock and they will lead the flock back into the coop or to another safe place. So they are very, very observant. Um, Peking hens do tend to be pretty loud. Um, this one is pretty loud. Um, and they are attentive moms, but they're terrible sitters, which is kind of an in bad order because you know if they're not sitters they can't really be moms but uh, if you want to hatch little peeking ducklings from the eggs that yours hatch I would not count on your peeking ladies sitting on their eggs so uh, definitely invest in an incubator if you're thinking about hatching their eggs all right let's talk a little bit about a little bit about their diet so most domestic ducks have very similar diets most people feed all their ducks the same thing and that is going to be uh, the layer pellets um, with about 16% protein you can just get those at tractor supply super easy um, if they're free-ranging domestic ducks like Peking ducks and wild ducks have almost identical diets they eat pretty much the same things um, so poultry or chicken feed, like I said, the pellets are usually given to ducks. Game bird feed is also used because it has a higher protein. And if your ducks are free ranging, if your ducks are not free ranging, you should give them some of that in their diet just to boost their protein. 
Uh, ducklings will need unmedicated starter feed, um, and pellets suit ducks best. I would not give full-grown ducks pellets. They, I mean, not. I would not give full-grown ducks crumbles. It's for ducklings, and it doesn't have the same level of nutrients that the regular pellets do. So, and it's just the percentages are off, and your duck won't be getting the nutrients that they need. So, don't feed crumbles to your full-grown ducks. Feed them pellets. Uh, scratch feed is definitely better suited for chickens just because they have a sharper beak compared to a duck's bill that's rounded and it's a lot easier for chickens to pick it up than it is for ducks. Um, layer feed, like I said, is the best for them, especially for your hens that are laying because the percentages of calcium and other nutrients does promote egg laying. Garden greens and fruits are also flock favorites. If you check out the link in my description, I do have a free resource you can download that has a list of all of the best treats you can give to your ducks. Um, and use protein-rich feed and corn to help them have better durability in the wintertime. Like I said, they do, these ducks, this breed is very durable against the cold, but you can always give them a little extra help by giving them things that are rich in fat so that they can build more fat and then stay warmer. All right, let's talk about the egg production itself. So Pekins will lay about 200 to 300 eggs per year. They will start laying about five to six months old. And if a duck reaches this age in the wintertime, you probably won't see as many eggs, if any. Um, to combat this, if you're really looking to get eggs from them, I would invest in a solar lamp, which will mimic sunlight. And if you keep it on eight hours in the coop, the hens will think that it's sunny outside and they will, it will promote laying. So if you're looking to have eggs in the winter, that is definitely something I would invest in. Um, when it comes to incubating duck eggs, they are viable up to seven to 10 days after laying. After that, the viability decreases a lot. So if you're looking to incubate some ducklings, uh, some eggs for ducklings, I would highly recommend getting them in the incubator as soon as they're laid uh, so that your chances of actually hatching the duckling are incredibly high. I will also make another video about the steps leading up to and during the hatching so that you kind of know the process to go through to make sure the humidity is correct, the temperature is correct, and that everything in the incubator is, the, is perfect conditions for a little duckling to come out. All right, and lastly, we're gonna talk about meat production. Now, I don't keep any of my ducks for meat. All of my ducks are pets and eggs, um, but I understand that uh, processing ducks is an important part of homesteading for a lot of people, so I thought that I would talk about that. Um, in this video. So the Peking duck meat is a rich source of protein and it is primarily dark meat. Uh, it does not have the greasy taste or texture associated with duck meat, so that's definitely a plus if you don't like greasy meat, which I don't think anybody likes greasy meat. Um, when Peking ducks are six weeks old, that is when they are ready to be butchered and when they are around six pounds. Jumbo Pekings, wait, you wait 12 weeks because they will be nine to 11 pounds at that point and they are optimal for butchering. Their rapid weight gain is why they are so optimal for meat. However, this can also work against you if you are raising them as pets because if you feed them too much, they definitely can gain weight from eating too much. So if you think that your peaking looks a little heftier than usual, maybe cut down on the food and only feed them at certain scheduled times during the day so that you can help them regulate their diets and not get really fat because if they get overweight, they also, along with the jumbo peaking, can have foot problems and leg problems. Um, Miss Cookie here lays down most of the day and I think that she is starting to get arthritis. I rescued her so I have no idea how old she is. So she could be seven years old for all I know. And uh, she seems to not like to stand up very much so I'm guessing that she might have some early onset arthritis. I'll probably take her to the vet soon and have that checked out. But definitely make sure you're regulating your duck's diet. I feed my ducks once in the morning and then I give them a few scoops in the evening time to get them into their coop and let them free range and forage for the rest of the day and that seems to keep them happy and healthy. So um, definitely make sure you're keeping track of your Peking's weight because they do gain weight really fast and really easily. All right, so that is the Peking duck. Everything you need to know about Peking ducks and their history, their physical attributes, behavior, weight, lifespan, etc. Everything you need to know. I hope this video was really helpful for you guys. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.